There are no synonyms for suicide. Along with plastic pearls and soft teeth, I've inherited her impulse. But along with virgin olives and sea salt, I've acquired a palate for joy for whom there are 57 synonyms. While joy is spun by 57 partners across a slick wood floor to the rhythm of jazz or funk or calypso, suicide stands in the corner of the gym in a thin cotton dress alone, holding a Coke by the neck, waiting for someone to offer her aspirin. And I'm here, white knuckled, through the craving for the girl in the thin cotton dress who would waltz me to permanent oblivion. The beautician tells me green will neutralize the red spots in my bad skin and yellow the blue half moons of exhaustion. I don't ask which to erase me completely, though I wonder what amount of cover will ever dislodge from my pores Detroit or, for that matter, Five Mile and Grand River Ave from their python grip on my brother who chooses prison over being loose with the indivisible prime number of suicide. I'm asked why none of the good writers write of madness, and I think because we're too busy running from it, I refuse the dance, but she chases me in dreams and then jerks me awake after throwing me off something really tall. I wake to find the best chest I've ever loved, intaking and exhaling sweet night air beside me. On the bad days, I want to save him from me. On the good ones, I can hear through the din his reminder of the 57 possible options. Out of love, I make a vow to become a spy, a Bond Holmes, Warsawski, Hines, mutt detective of ways out of this lurid maze and then tell everyone else about them. The first is decide, decision. The thing around which we've been told our misery has formed itself through our own bad choices. Locate fault within self to suppress truth, suppress art, suppress change. But I say decide to know otherwise. You see, it ain't no coincidence that I think I'm ugly. It is the manifestation of destiny, mine. A girl in the world born to be receptum, given a false history, and whose brother's lives are criminalized. So take that exhaust pipe out of your mouth and start sucking on this. The homecoming queen is precisely that because she's never been dangerous and they'll never be pretty or popular enough to wear that coveted crown. I am assembling the royal court if I to keep yourself alive. The first is to decide, the second to know, and the third is to tell on yourself. Look at the branch you're standing on, the one you've been pushed out onto. Snap it. Out of it will fly everything you've ever needed. Out of mine flew 57 pens to write as many stories in as many colors over every bold-faced lie that ever said I'm shit and neutralize it. Out of yours will come the invitation to draw, sing, paint, sculptor, crop dust your own story into the history of mouths grown salty with refusal to drop arms and go quietly. Tell how you dropped a line into a dirty, dirty river, came out with a boot and wore it proudly in the name of your people who were never meant to be anything but grist, but who without enough became enough to last. We can wallpaper the prisons with such stories or grind them down to be funneled with our hands into the necks of Coca-Colas and drunk by girls who've stopped believing in synonyms. <laughs>